in math, we're always learning how to do something, and then we are learning how to undo it. Like adding, and then to undo addition, you would subtract. Multiply, to undo multiply, you would divide. Um, with fractions, you would do the reciprocal. So you're always finding out how to do the opposite, basically undoing something. So that is what factoring is. We are going to factor out the greatest common factor of a polynomial. So we are going to undo distribution, and that is by factoring. So in a multiplication problem, the numbers multiplied together are called factors. The answer to a multiplication problem is called the product. In the multiplication problem, we have 5 times 4 equals 20. So 5 and 4 are factors, and 20 is the product. If we re reverse the problem, we have 20 equals 5 times 4. We say that we have factored 20 into 5 times 4. So we flip it around, and that would be called factoring. So we write out what are the factors of 20. We could write 20 multiple ways, though, right? We could also write um, 1 times 20. We could also write 20 equals 10 times 2. And then you could also say it in reverse. We could say 20 equals 2 times 10. So we could flip around the product because they still mean the same thing. And we could also say equals 20 times 1 and 20 equals 4 times 5. So there are different ways to write those factors. So whenever we add that variable in there, it is going to be that we take out the greatest common factor, including the greatest common factor of a variable. So in the multiplication problem, we have 2x equals x plus 4. Whenever we distribute, 2x times x is 2x squared, and 2x times 4 is 8x, then we can see that 2x and x plus 4 are the factors, and the product is 2x squared plus 8x. Then we could reverse the problem, and let's say we were given this and we're asked to factor it. So what we would do is we'd look for the greatest common factor, take it out, and then put parentheses around what is left behind after you divide it by that factor. So our first part is just naming the factors and naming the product of each problem. So if we look at this first one, we have 5x minus 7 equals 5x minus 35. So the factors are the terms that are being multiplied. Those are your factors. So 5 and x minus 7. And the product of those factors is the outcome, the 5x minus 35. So with this factoring, the kind of problems that you'll be given is this 5x minus 35, and you're going to be asked to factor it. So you look for your greatest common factor. So let's do the next one. It says... Um, 3x, parentheses, x plus 9 equals 3x squared plus 7x. So that 3x was being distributed. So our factors are 3x and x plus 9. And our product is 3x squared plus 27x. These are equivalent. They have an equal sign between them. They are equivalent. Just this is in factored form, and this is in simplified form after you multiply it. The next one, the factors are negative 10x and x minus 6. And then your product is negative 10x squared plus 60x. Then the last one, our factors are 4xy squared 
because that is being multiplied by the other item or the other term, the 3x plus 8y. And then the product is what is given after it is multiplied together. So that now that we know what factors are and products are, we are going to now look to see how we can factor out the greatest common factor. This greatest common factor is the largest integer and highest degree of each variable that will divide evenly into each term of the polynomial. So let's look at our example. Well, it says factoring is the re reverse of multiplying. Just like dividing, we can divide in order to factor. So if the polynomial 5x minus 35, we look and see what factor do they have in common. The factors of 5x are just 5, 1, and x. The factors of 35 are 5 and 7. So we look for the greatest common factor. So what they have in common is the 5. So we would factor the 5 out. So that comes outside the parentheses. And then you look and see five times what gives me that first term five X and it'd be X. Then you look and see how could I get minus 35 if I have five times something. So five times a negative seven gives me the negative 35. The next one, three X squared plus 27 X. So you look and see what do they have in common? They have the three in common and they also have an X in common. So three X is the factor. So we would pull it out or it's called the GCF. And then you look and see what am I going to multiply three X by to get three X squared. And it have to be X. Three X times what gives me 27 X and it'd be nine. And then the last one deals with multiple exponents, variables. So we look and see 12 X and 32. So you look at the 12 and the 32. We look and see what goes into both. They're both even. So we know they both have two, but is that the largest? No, four is four will evenly divide both of them. So you look at what they have in common. Then you see what can evenly divide both of them. So four. So that's why four, is the GCF of 12 and 32. And then you look at X. We have X squared and X. How many X's do they have in common? One. So we would just pull out one. And then what about the Y? We have Y squared and Y cubed. How many do they have in common? They actually have two in common because you have a Y squared and a Y three. So Y squared is what they have in common. So that is what you would factor out for X, Y squared. And so whenever you factor out, you have to think, what do I have to multiply four X, Y squared by to get this 12 X squared, Y squared and the 32 X, Y cubed. So we're going to do several examples of these because it takes a little while to get the hang of it. So let's look at the back side. Five through eight just ask us to find the largest in integer that will divide all the terms. So let's look at nine X and 45. What will divide? And we're only doing the integer. We're doing the variable separate. What will divide both nine and 45? We want the greatest common factor. What? Nine, yeah. Let's go down to nine. What is the largest degree X that can be factored out? Do they both have an X in common? Yes. No, so this would be none. OK. 
Okay, let's look at this one. What is the largest number that can be factored out of each of these terms? Seven. And then what is the largest variable that we can pull out? Just an X, yep. So GCF equals X. Let's go to number seven, 18 and 12. Six. Mm -hmm. Six is the largest number that'll go into both. And then what X's do they have in common? How many X's do they have in common? Three, so X cubed. Okay, now we have three terms, but we can still do that. What will go into both 15, or all three, 15, 25, and 55? Five. And what is the exponent that all of them have in common? Yep, just X. So now we are going to use this to factor it out. So we found that our GCF of the whole thing would be nine because I'm using what I know from up here. So I'm going to factor out a nine and I need two terms inside here because there are two terms here, so two terms inside. Nine times what gives nine X? Just X. Well, then nine times what gives 45? Five, so X plus five. Put a box right off. Okay, the next one is like six and 10. So what is our GCF? Seven X, exactly. So when we factor out a 7x, what else does this 7x need in order to get 7x squared? Another x. And what does negative 21x need in order to become minus 3? And you can always double check by multiplying in 7x times x is 7x squared. 7x times a minus 3 is negative 21x. Okay, the next one, 18x to the 6 and 12x to the 3rd. What's our GCF? 6x cubed because that's what we found up here. So 6x cubed. What are we going to multiply it by? Another x cubed. And what is the coefficient for that first term? 18. How do we go from six to 18? What do we need to multiply by three? And then what about the next one though? How many X's does it need? It has an X cubed. It already, it's going to be multiplied by X cubed. So it doesn't need any X's. So it's just two. So what we want to have inside here is that we can't factor any more. If we can factor any more, then we'd have to continue to do that. The three X cubed and two have no, nothing in common. Same thing here. X plus five has nothing in common and seven and three have nothing in common. All right. The next one, number 16, what is our GCF? What goes into all of those numbers? Five and an X. So we'll do five X. How many terms are going to be inside the parentheses? If there are three terms on this side, there'll be three terms inside the parentheses over here. So five X times what gets 15 X cubed? Three X squared. Yeah, because remember we need to add these together to get the cubed. Okay, then what's the next one? And then 5x times what gets 55x? Yep, yeah, so plus 11. Okay, so I want you to work on 17 through 25. 
and yes so this will be homework tomorrow we'll go over 26 27 28 and then we'll go into factoring trinomials and delta math let me check and see how many problems are on delta math 